Hello, everyone. Welcome to the message for Akron Alliance Fellowship Church in Akron, Ohio. We appreciate you being here today. My name is Melvin Gaines. We're going to go ahead and get started with today's message, a very important message about missional living. Let's go ahead and look to the Lord with a word of prayer and we'll get started. Father, we thank you for this time that you've given to us to be in the word today. We thank you for the presence of the Holy Spirit, that it speaks to me uh, in delivering your words, not my words, and also speaks to everyone else listening. We thank you again for how you teach us, you instruct us, you guide us, you sanctify us with your very presence. And we give you praise and thanks. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, this message again is for uh, Sunday, November the 12th, 2023. And the mission, uh, the title of the message is Missional Living. Do you know when God is speaking to you? And it's not intended to be a difficult question, but it is one that you can readily answer, or perhaps not. How do you know if you hear him? Is the communication clear? Consider that many people may be ignoring God altogether. If you choose to live your own way, God will eventually let you do just that. I want to paint a picture for you as to why I'm leading with this information in today's message. The recent election in Ohio involved adding abortion rights to the state constitution and for approval of the recreational use of marijuana. According to the Ohio Secretary of State website, about 49% Almost half of all registered voters participated statewide. Both issues passed by 13 point margins. The people have spoken and they want what they want. Now, it's not hard to conclude that the election results are indicative of a society moving further and further away from God. It's my opinion, but that's my conclusion. By the way, this is not merely a political statement. It is a statement about society's moral decline. For many, living with decency is less and less important, and a lot of people just don't seem to care anymore. So what about you? The world's point of view has deeply impacted many people in the church. We cannot allow the world to push believers, believers in Jesus Christ, into a place of indifference. Here's the deal. Some of us need to wake up, repent, and ask God for forgiveness for our indifference. Indifference reflects a form of being self-centered, which is not what Jesus wants from us. Please turn your Bibles and electronic devices to 2 Chronicles chapter 7. We're going to look at verses 14 and 15. 2 Chronicles 7, verses 14 and 15. And this will be in the New International Version. 2 Chronicles 7, verse 14 and 15. Verse 14, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now, very seldom do people usually include in this reading verse 15, but verse 15 is really important to pick up here. Verse 15, this is the Lord speaking. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayers offered in this place. Why? Because people are sincerely seeking the Lord. The Lord is going to listen to those prayers. They will be effective prayers. They are meaningful prayers because of the hearts of the people, because they call the name of the Lord, humble themselves and pray, turn away from sin, turn away from evil. God's going to hear you. Our mission as a church is to lift our hearts and minds to Jesus in prayer. He hears our earnest prayers. Even while the world chooses to live as John notes in 1 John, according to the world's viewpoint, 
That's in 1 John 4, verse 5. We are to always draw upon the love of Jesus. Let's go to 1 John. Let's start with 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. I want you to take a look at what he says here. We need to live in such a manner where we truly do recognize that we have victory in Jesus. We do not need to be caught up with what the world is doing or what they would or shun away from people because the world is doing things you don't agree with or don't like. But you already have the victory because God has already taken care of that for us. 1 John chapter 4 verse 4. You dear children are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. Greater. Furthermore, Jesus has called us to not stay down in the dumps, but to get up, shake it off, and be lights in the world as we share of his goodness. Drop down in 1 John chapter 4, down to verse 21. 1 John 4, verse 21. 1 John 4, verse 21. This also is the NIV version. And he has given us this command. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. We're going to see that later in the passages as we go further. There are people all around us who need to hear about how much God loves them. All around us. It all begins with God's love. His love is the catalyst that drives his gospel around the world. Go back to John chapter 16, if you have your Bibles open. John 16, John chapter 16, verse 33. John 16, verse 33. And once again, this is the NIV version. John chapter 16, verse 33. Jesus says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. People need to hear about Jesus because he has already overcome the world. He has the victory. Overcome what? Death, sin, all the things that we struggle with. Illness. He's overcome all of that because of what he did for us on the cross. With this good news, we must share the good news as we live and breathe. We must, from today going forward, participate in missional living. Missional living. By definition, missional living is a Christian term that essentially describes living a missionary lifestyle. Now, what does that mean? Being missional involves embracing the culture, the practices and behaviors of the people, in order to reach others for the gospel. Missional living means living in this manner every day, everywhere you go. It could be at home entertaining guests, walking around the block on the street where you live, going to the grocery store at a Target or a Walmart, or even when you're on vacation. In all instances, you have to become a part of the environment Wherever you are, your most familiar place is where you live. It's your neighborhood, where your neighbors are. How do we best reflect the love of God? It starts right in our own neighborhood. A very familiar passage, I want you to turn to it, Matthew chapter 22. We're going to look at verses 36 through 40. Missional living starts in your own neighborhood. It starts where you live the people that you see all around you. Matthew 22, we're going to look at verse 36 and then read down to verse 40. And this is one of those memory passages for you to keep and uh, give put under consideration if you haven't memorized this one already. It's a good, vo uh, good verse to remember and to remember exactly what your mission is. That's what this is all about. Verse 36, teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Verse 37, Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two 
commandments. Jesus is reminding us how we can become less self-focused with our obedience to God's commands and allowing love to be the catalyst in our communication with our neighbors. Now, I have a confession to make. Over my lifetime, I've lived in eight neighborhoods for a year or longer. And while I was able to communicate with some next door neighbors, I don't remember any of them. I didn't become truly missional until about three years ago when my lovely bride and I got out of the house and started walking in the neighborhood. We now know a number of the neighbors by name and can lift them up in prayer. Only a handful of them have a relationship with Jesus, so we're intentional in keeping up those relationships and building on them. Living missionally means starting right where you live. Check in on your neighbors. Take walks in the neighborhood and say hello to them when you see them. This is great practice for those of you who are more inclined to keep to yourself. I just want to remind you that Jesus does not want you to keep to yourself. He wants you to pray for a little courage and put yourself out there. He wants you to be missional in a world that already likes to keep to itself. We are to be missional in order to be a part of Jesus's mission for the world. His desire is for all people from all walks of life worldwide to be saved. We get that from 1 Timothy 2.4. He desires for every person to be saved. And that's because our God is a missional God. Ralph Winter notes in his coursework, Perspectives on the World Christian Movement, quote, God is a God of global purpose. He has already put in our hearts the longing to be a friend to a great God, to somehow become a co-worker with him, living in the dignity of, of a purpose larger than ourselves. We really want to serve God in the biggest way we know how. Amen. That's a great statement. Perhaps you are still questioning your own purpose as you ponder being missional for Christ. No problem. Consider God's promise to Abraham. He revealed his purpose, which was personal and yet global. Turn to Genesis 17. Let's take a look at that promise. Genesis 17, and we're going to look at verses 1 through 7. Now, this will be in the New Living Translation, but I want you to pick up on the words that are being used here to understand the nature of God's promise to Abraham. Genesis 17, verses 1 through 7. Starting at verse 1, when Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am El Shaddai, God Almighty. Serve me faithfully and live a blameless life. Verse 2. I will make a covenant with you by which I will guarantee to give you countless descendants. Other texts use the word offspring, but descendants. These are descendants of Abraham. Verse 3. At this, Abram fell face down on the ground, and God said to him, this is my covenant with you. I will make you the father of a multitude of nations. What's more, I am changing your name. It will no longer be Abram. Instead, you will be called Abraham, for you will be father of many nations. I will make you extremely fruitful. Your descendants will become many nations and kings will be among them. Verse 7. I will confirm my covenant with you and your descendants after you from generation to generation. This is the everlasting covenant. I will always be your God and the God of your descendants after you. What a wonderful promise to make. Abraham, and his name literally means father of many, father of nations. Abraham was chosen by God because God was keenly aware of the heart that Abraham had for him. In Genesis 15:6. Uh, he knew the heart of Abraham. He knew exactly who he was, and he was deemed righteous because of the way Abraham believed in God. The reason that Abraham was given so much began with how much he believed in God, plain and simple. Abraham loved God because we are reminded that he was declared righteous by him. 
and he was given his life purpose. Abraham knew exactly what his life purpose was. You are called out of the world as well. Abraham was called out of his nation, but you are called out of the world as well. The Greek word for called out is ecclesia. It also means assembly. It is synonymous with the body of believers that gather as a church. Missional people are called by God to move and proclaim the truth of Jesus Christ in the same manner as those who we send out on the mission field. There really is no difference except perhaps in the language barriers that have to be overcome and all of that, but the mission is the same. We are to go in the strength of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We depend upon him, we rely upon him. In his book, The Purpose Driven Life, Rick Warren notes that the purpose of your life is far greater than your own personal fulfillment, your peace of mind, or even your happiness. It's far greater than your family, your career, or even your wildest dreams or ambitions. If you want to know why you were placed on this planet, you must begin with God. You were born by his purpose and for his purpose. Missional living is all about relationships. You can't rush this process. It takes time. And not everyone you come in contact with has a lot of time to devote to it. Always remember that God's timing in building relationships is all that matters. He knows the hearts of all involved. Take a look at Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Let's look at Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1. And we know that we know that we're operating according to God's timing and it's always going to be difficult for us to process because time is for us. It's not for God. We're serving an eternal God. And frankly, the time he transcends beyond time because he knows the future already. But let's look at Ecclesiastes 3, 1, for, and this is for our purposes to recognize that we don't know God's timing on anything, but we continue, or we are to continue to pray to him. Verse 1, Ecclesiastes 3, for everything there is a season and a time and for every matter under heaven. A time for every matter under heaven. I want to make sure I read that correctly. And yes, it may take years. Get a journal and write down the names of people that you make acquaintance with and be patient while God works through it as you stay in prayer over those individuals. Romans 12, verse 12 says, Be rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer. And I want you to turn to Galatians 6, 9. Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. Galatians 6, verse 9. Verse 9, Galatians 6. This is from the English Standard Version. And let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. We can't give up because time is not moving the way we think it should move. It's not our call to do that. So let's look at this further. It's time to get out of your comfort zone. Put yourself out there. Say hello to complete strangers. Talk to your neighbors. Engage with your coworkers, even your CEO. Schedule meetups for coffee or lunch. Put effort into your relationships to make friendships. That's why you build relationships. You're trying to make friendships. And there are more good reasons to do this and live missionally. Making friends may be more difficult as you get older, but there are health benefits within good friendships, including better immune function, decreased risk of illness and injury, increased longevity, and reduced stress. Making friendships and having friends help in all those areas. Take a look at 3 John. There's only one chapter in 3 John, so it's going to be 3 John 1, verse 2. But verse 2 in, in 3 John. It's a very brief book. 3 John 
1 verse 2. Beloved, I pray that all may go well with you and that you may be in good health as it goes well with your soul. Amen. We all would love to have good health. And our prayer is that the Lord will maintain our good health, frankly, because that is how we can be most effective in ministry, sharing with others. If we're always on a sick bed, that's going to be kind of hard to do. So we recognize that we rely upon God to give us the strength and the ability to do it. Living missionally glorifies God while enhancing your health and well-being. And it means a great deal to others as you engage them and spend time with them. Engage them and spend time with them. Now that we have discussed what we have as far as a purpose in living missionally for Jesus, he reassures us with his daily presence, uh, the power of the indwelling Holy Spirit. We don't want to neglect mentioning the Spirit in this. His love for us reminds us that we will never live as orphans. His words of hope are fulfilled by the presence of the Spirit. John chapter 14, verse 18 talks about the presence of the Holy Spirit and how important it, that's going to be for us. But let's talk about how the, God reminds us we'll never live as orphans. We'll never be left alone. We're going to be in the process and he'll be with us. The Greek word orphanous, O-R-P-H-A-N-O-U-S, means fatherless children. Same thing as being an orphan. In ancient biblical culture, orphans and widows were extremely vulnerable and could not care for themselves. As a result, God made sure they would come under his divine protection. And we find that an example of that in Jeremiah 49, verse 11. God has a heart for his people, and the manifestation of Jesus Christ is the culmination of his mission. He entrusts his followers to go and make disciples all over the world in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and teach them what I have taught you, referring to what God teaches us. That's in Matthew 28, verses 19 and 20. That's the Great Commission. That's what we're talking about. Missional living is selfless living. It requires a love of God and loving others as Jesus loves them. With this combination, we make a very compelling argument for having a relationship with Jesus. Go back to 1 John chapter 4, and we're going to lead, look at a couple of verses, one of them partial and fragmented. But go to 1 John 4, we're going to read verse the first part of verse 6, and all of verse 7. So 1 John 4, 6a, we'll call it, and then verse 7. 1 John 4, verse 6. But we belong to God, and those who know God listen to us. Amen. Those who know God, or those who want to know God, will listen to you, and the Spirit will assure that. Now drop down to verse 7. Dear friends, let us continue to love one another, for love comes from God, Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God. Amen. When I to finally determine my own life purpose in my relationship with Jesus Christ, it gave new meaning to me for my faith and what I was striving to accomplish. Not for my own benefit, but for the benefit of the body of Christ and for the purpose of winning people to Christ. The Christian and Missionary Alliance is very clear about this in their statement of faith. And you can look that up if you need to at cmalliance, that's all one word, dot org. A.B. Simpson's conviction to serve and be obedient to God was ever apparent in his message, Service for the King. He notes that, quote, God calls every one of you to some special duty. I mean that mission for him, which is the very meaning of life. And without life, without which life will be a miserable mistake and prove a fraud at last. And all the wishes and desires you spent on yourselves were lost. And even you lost the thing you lived for, yourself. 
You see how more important that mission is? It is your purpose. A missional approach is far beyond living for oneself. A missional approach to life means that a believer loves God with obedience and reaches out of his comfort zone for the purpose of proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. Anytime, anywhere. Amen. Our world is declining daily and is mired in apathy. Be the change in today's world to draw people to Jesus. Put down your phones and turn off your Netflix. Get up and get out. Spend time with the people that Jesus wants to reach. Take walks in your neighborhood. Notice I've mentioned that more than once. Commit to fellowship in and outside of the church. And remember the international workers who are serving overseas with prayer and support as you live missionally right where you are. Father, may this message inspire people to do more to serve you and look out for those who need you as your personal, as personal Lord and Savior of their lives. I thank you, Lord, for your teaching, and I thank you for this message. I thank you for how important it is for us to not live as the world lives. Live in the world, but not of the world, as your word says. Thank you, Lord, for how we can just start from right where we are at home and live missionally for you and live for Christ, be reflections of you wherever we go. We thank you, Lord, for the teaching. Thank you for the inspiration. Thank you for the guidance that you provide for us. We ask all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. We appreciate you being here for the message today for Akron Alliance Fellowship Church in Akron, Ohio, Sunday, November the 12th, 2023. God bless you. We hope that this message really hits home. Feel free to share this message with anyone who needs to hear it, frankly. And we pray that you get something out of it. Come and join us at akronalliance.org. For those of you in town in Akron, Ohio, come and see us. 688 Diagonal Road, Akron, Ohio. We appreciate you being here. God bless you. Take care of yourselves. We'll see you next time.